Sometimes in life, things happen and you go through experiences and you just need a second opinion. You don't know if you're being too sensitive or too crazy about it, so you usually take to the internet and you post on a Reddit thread and then it ends up in a YouTube video with a mustache piece of shit with weird hair. How you doing? Today we're on the Reddit thread, am I being too sensitive? And we're going to find out because I'm going to insert my opinion as a straight white man because that's what we do, baby. Let's go. Am I being too sensitive for being upset that everyone got hammered at my baby shower? My family threw my husband and me a beautiful baby shower today. It was a great time until a small group decided to continue the celebration after the party ended. It included my mom, fire, husband, sister, my cousin, and her husband, and two friends. They all had a lot to drink. My sister got overly flirty with everyone. Nice. At some point, a THC vape pen. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I agree with you or disagree with you yet, but THC vape pen is already pissing me off. A THC vape pen was passed around. They were playing loud music on a phone. My husband got fall down drunk. I've been fall down drunk so much. We were at a nice restaurant and I was embarrassed. I still paid the entire tab, which was hefty, and told my husband it was time to go. He totally wiped out in the parking lot, enough to scrape up his knee pretty badly through his khakis. Oh, she's got a khaki husband, that sucks. When we got back to the hotel, he bled all over the comforter and got noodles everywhere trying to eat some leftovers. I feel like I'm being a spoiled brat because everyone gave me such a nice day, but I'm really upset about how the night ended up, so am I being too sensitive? If this happens all the time, then you're not being too sensitive. It's like, dude, again, you're hammered at this family thing, what the fuck? But if this is kind of like a one-off, it's like, come on, man, we were at a party with your family. He's not partying with a bunch of hookers with fat asses and pointy nipples. I mean, he's partying with your mom, your sister, your cousin, and her husband and two friends, you know? If anything, I'd be pretty excited that my family gets along that well, you know? Some people, they go to baby showers and you just, you barely talk to anyone and then your aunt says something weird and you're like, we gotta go. That's it, grab the coats. Your family had a good time at a family party. You know, I, I know that not every family is like mine, but usually we go to a family party and then we get home and that's when the party starts. We open up a bottle of Jameson and next thing we're singing show tunes in the middle of my mother's living room. And sometimes people bump into sharp edges of the coffee table and bleed all over the ground and that's just part of it. Am I being too sensitive about the list of rules my long distance boyfriend gave me? Me and my recently long distance boyfriend have been dating for a year, but I started college recently and moved to a different time zone. So he sent me a list, list of rules. Here they are. Run for the hills. What are you doing? One, location must be on at all times. Uh, okay. Two, bedtime is 1030. Hmm? When I was 11, I didn't have a bedtime when I was 11. I was up at 3 a.m. telling people on Halo to suck my dick. <laughs> Oh wait, there's more. Bedtime is 10.30, you can't be too tired to talk to me in the morning when I'm not busy. Well, I mean, we should just gun this guy down, I think. <laughs> Three, send me your class schedule and text me accordingly. What does text me accordingly mean? <laughs> what the fuck? Four, when you are doing homework or in a space where you cannot call or text, send me photos of it and proof with a timestamp to show where you are you say you are. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I'm pretty sure that this ends with you sending a video of you getting fucked to him. That's what I think. No, but I'm serious because I feel like too many, too many rules is how you rebel. You know what I mean? That's why all the, the really Catholic girls grow up and they like love anal and stuff. Like, I mean, that's just a theory. I don't know that for sure, to be honest. But it is a theory. It's a working theory. I'm okay with rule one, but for rule two, I told him he can sleep whenever he wants, but I'm not going to bed at 1030. He said, why is it fair that I have to stay up all night and fuck up my day to talk to you? Then he started guilting me by saying, do you care about my health? Do you want more time together? If the answer is yes to both of these 10.30 is your bedtime now. I mean, what is this? This is so weird. I would ask him about the rest of the unreasonable rules, but I don't even want to open that can of worms right now. Am I being crazy or unreasonable or too sensitive by thinking he's being controlling? Oh, you're not? Like, what kind of question is that? The fact that you're asking is kind of insane to me. He has already brainwashed you and this person is not okay. I am pregnant and my husband's comment out of nowhere made me cry. Obviously I don't have a pregnant wife, but I did have a pregnant sister-in-law and a pregnant sister at one time, and this makes sense. Just sitting watching a basic show with our two-year-old and I said a simple observation. Oh wow, I think that dog breed is the same as Enzo, look. I did a rewind as it was briefly on the show and he didn't look up and he said, I don't care, I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> It seems small, but I just burst into tears. Since when is it okay to be a jerk and dismissive for no reason? Waiting for him to come and say he was just kidding. I can see how that's upsetting and that's fucked up for him to say to a pregnant woman who is dealing with all types of hormones and weird shit. Like sometimes pregnant women are like, 
they smell a garbage truck and they're like, we should have spaghetti tonight. <laughs> like it's like, things are just like, the wires are crossed. You know what I mean? So you can't just tell people who are dealing with shit like that, like I don't care, I could give a fuck about this fucking dog that looks like our fucking dog. Who gives a shit? Like what's going on in that guy's day? I don't think you're being too sensitive. I do think for me, this is hilarious though. <laughs> like, to read, it's very funny. The idea that you were excited and you're like, oh my God, it looks like our dog. And he just goes, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that's so fucking funny. But that sucks for you, to be honest. Lauren was a stripper for six months. However, the beginning of a Netflix documentary, <laughs> Lauren was a stripper for six months and then she was tragically chained to the back of a truck and dragged through West Virginia. I saw a news headline that read, stripper murdered. Well, <laughs> I was correct. Why can't a murdered person be who they really are in a headline? Why use that one something about them that makes for a crass and easy headline? Am I being too sensitive? I agree that we shouldn't put stripper in the headline if she was just like in a regular outfit walking to go get coffee or something. I'd be like, that stripper got fucking murdered. Like over there. They shot that stripper in the back of the head and she was in she had her coat on, you know, like you're not gonna, that, that I think is unfair. But if she was at the strip club and she was stripping and someone shot her on stage, it would be weird to be like, you know, a, this, a young woman who was hoping to become a teacher one day, like fucking, you know? But it really depends where the stripper was killed. But I agree, we shouldn't put stripper in the headline unless she got killed in a strip club or if her tits were out for money. My boyfriend sleeps a lot. My boyfriend almost always oversleeps when we have plans to hang out. Yesterday he said that at 4 p.m. he will be here at my house, but I am riding this at 3.19 p.m. and he is still sleeping. Not to mention that he sleeps a lot. He is currently unemployed but looking for jobs. And I don't get if he's doing it because I matter less to him or because of his lack of discipline. Am I being too sensitive? I don't think you're being too sensitive. I mean, who the fuck wants to date this person? <laughs> Come on. He's unemployed, he's sleeping. Who the fuck sleeps, is sleeping at 3 p.m.? That's psychotic to me. I mean, unless you're an overnight nurse or you're like, you know, working the night shift, there's no reason for you to, and you're not working the night shift, by the way, you're unemployed. There's no reason why the sun is out and, and so are you not. What? <laughs> what this dude needs is to date the guy from earlier who had all those rules, because he would whip him into shape. He'd be like, yo, bedtime, 10.30. All right, location on at all fucking times. That's what this guy needs. He needs someone to whip him into shape. You can't be sleeping at 3 p.m. Your boyfriend is a fucking lazy piece of shit. It is a lack of discipline and he probably doesn't really like you that much. Because if he liked you, he would get a job and he would have more discipline and he'd be excited to see you. Hey man, you don't have a job, but at least you have a nice girlfriend who's been willing to put up with you sleeping until fucking 3 p.m. like a koala bear. Maybe you should Put some effort into anything. If you don't have a job, there's an easy one standing right there who has sex with you. That's an easy one, all right? Put some effort into there. All right, before we get to the rest of this video, we do have some sponsors for today, and that is Rocket Money, starting with Rocket Money. Rocket Money is an all-in-one personal finance app that's going to help you save money, possibly lower your bills, and cancel unwanted subscriptions because let's face it, we've all signed up with some free trials out there or we're paying for things that we're not even using, okay? And maybe you signed up for it a while ago and you were using it at one point, but you've been paying for it for the last six months and it's just money coming out of your account and you don't really realize. Um, and Rocket Money is gonna help you identify those things and cancel them. On average, people are saving $720 a year. Wouldn't you rather have $720 in your pocket? Think about it, okay? Uh, and like I said, it can help lower your bills as well. If you upload a picture of your bill, they can haggle it down for you if possible. Uh, and yeah. Uh, also, will help you budget. So if you're a little bit of an irresponsible spender, like I can be sometimes, it's nice to have an app where you can set a budget and put all of your finances in there so you know that you're not going over the budget that you have set for yourself. So like I said, it's an all-in-one personal finance app um, that's going to help you be more responsible with your money and put some more money back in your pocket, okay? So uh, you can go try it for free, by the way, at rocketmoney.com slash Joe, and you can unlock a lot more premium features, uh, a lot more features with the premium. So so go to rocketmoney.com slash Joe to check it out and try it today. Our next sponsor is SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the app where I buy all of my tickets. If I'm going to a sporting event, I'm going to a concert or a Broadway play or a monster truck rally, I'm going to get all of my tickets through the SeatGeek app. It is the number one rated ticketing app in the app store. 
and they're my favorite. I've been working with them for years, and I buy all of my tickets off of them, and I love their interface. So if you go on their uh, app, you will see it'll have a nice little picture of the stadium, and it'll show you all the tickets, and they're color graded. So dark red is very bad, all the way up to dark green, which is an amazing price for your ticket, and that's probably my favorite part about you know, buying my tickets through that is that I always look for those dark green tickets so that I know I'm not getting hosed. Okay. I am playing, I am buying tickets for a great price. I'm getting away with murder. Okay. So, uh, go on the SeatGeek app and you will get $20 off of your first purchase with the promo code Joe. Okay. So go download that SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com and use the promo code Joe for $20 off of your first purchase. All right. Enjoy. Am I being too sensitive for paying for a hand sandwich? Hand? <laughs> ham sandwich. I went to a coffee shop with my Christian friend. Oh boy. The guy before us ordered a ham sandwich, but his credit card was declined. My friend offered to pay, but only if the guy would not eat ham. <laughs> Wait, Christians can't eat ham? My friend quoted Leviticus 11. Oh my God, punch this dude in the face. <laughs> Just punch this guy in the face. It's a ham sandwich in a fucking deli, probably in the morning. And you're gonna quote Leviticus? My friend quoted Leviticus 11 about the punishment of eating pork. I took out my credit card and paid for his food. I'm an ex-Christian who was well-versed in the Bible, so I googled Matt 25. These all are just starting to sound like screen names. Like, I called Matt for 2069. <laughs> I googled Matt 25 and showed it to my friend. It says, for I was hungry and you didn't feed me. My friend is now demanding an apology from me. Am I being too sensitive for undermining my Christian friend? Fucking no, you aren't. Like, what are we talking about here? Hey man, I'll buy your ham sandwich if you don't eat the ham sandwich. What are you buying then? That's the sandwich they ordered. What, do you, what is he gonna eat? That's what he wants, a fucking ham sandwich. Oh my God, man. Super religious people that wanna force it on other people are so weird. I would've paid for the sandwich and then I would've paid the deli $400 to send me the video of the pig being killed. Am I being too sensitive for being upset with my boyfriend after he wouldn't play a song I requested in the car? I drive me and my boyfriend everywhere because he doesn't have a car. Sick start to this. He always listens to his music in the car and lets his friends request songs if they're driving with me. Today I requested one song to play and he said no. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. Uh, and that he didn't want to listen to that song. I tried to reason with him and say that I rarely asked to play songs and that it's just one song that it would make me so happy. So 10 minutes later I asked again, he said, how about we just listen to no music <laughs> and turn the music off? I'm really upset by this because instead of letting me listen to one song I want to listen to in my own car that I'm driving, I'm really upset about this and wonder if it's justified. Oh, man, I wanna know what song it is so fucking bad. There is songs that I'd be like, that song sucks, let's not listen to that. This is weird though, your boyfriend doesn't respect you. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's very clear that he's like, nah, my boy Jared just said that he wants to listen to Salt Shaker by the Ying Yang Twins, so we're gonna put that on. <laughs> So we're not gonna listen to fucking Taylor Swift right now. That's for fuck sure. The fact that he's like, how about we listen to no music? <laughs> it's fucking hilarious to me. This guy's a fucking asshole. Maybe the song reminds him of his like, you know, his dead grandma or something or his ex. You know, you don't want him to play that song. You know, you play like Love Story by Taylor Swift and he's like, oh fuck, I'm thinking about, you know, Meredith again. You know what I mean? You don't want that. So maybe he had a good reason for not wanting to listen to the song or the song sucks or he's a big piece of pile of shit and he doesn't respect you. And if that's something he did in front of his friends, you should leave him immediately. Am I being too sensitive about my adoptive mother telling me that I don't need a 23andMe kit because she already knows I'm Korean? That feels like racist for some reason. It's like, you're Korean, I can see it. I can see you're Korean in your face. Like, this is fucked up. So I am an Asian American who was adopted from Korea. Well, that kind of settles it actually. <laughs> My family is white. I was visiting my mother the other day and noticed she had a 23andMe DNA test kit. I commented and told her that I got one too and she replied, why? We already know that you're Korean. Is it fair to be offended by this? When I told her that was offensive and that I could be a mix of races, she told me I have no right to be offended by it and if I get offended by something, I need to hold my tongue. I need to hold my tongue? Who's this bitch, a nun? I explained that she doesn't know that I'm 100% Korean. That's why I got the test but she continued to tell me it was not offensive. Am I being too sensitive? I don't think you're being too sensitive. I think that your weird mother might be hiding something in your DNA though. <laughs> because why the fuck is this a big deal, you know? Yeah, if you're from Korea, you could be Korean and a bunch of other things. People move around. We have planes, you know what I mean? We could get around to different places and people have sex in weird places and they move to different <laughs> countries. So it is what it is. I don't know what she's like getting out of like telling you like, nah, you're good, you're Korean. Like, what the fuck? Like, why? Like, why tell me that? Like, I want to do a 23 in me. And look, you're looking at me right now. You go, white. I go, yeah, for sure. I am white. 
but I don't know. I have to trust my parents and they're just like, I don't know Italian or something. Like that's usually what my dad says when I ask him like, what are we? He's like, I don't know Italian or something. So I have no idea. I just go with white. I would like to spit in a tube though and send it in the mail and find out if I'm like Scandinavian or something. That would be interesting. I don't think you're being too sensitive. I think your mom is being weird though. So I would do it just to spite her. And then I would probably make something up and just come back and be like, I'm not even fucking Korean. What happened back then? <laughs> you know, like just make something up. My fiance said something awful during an argument. Cannot wait to find out what this is. My fiance had a fight driving back from vacation. I mentioned I wanted to dye my hair and he said, you really think your hair is what you should be worried about? <laughs> My God, what a fucking prick. When I asked what he meant, he said, look at the way your shirt is stretching over your gut. That's the issue. How did you not just go like this and just fucking send it off the road and crash it and kill you both? That's probably what I would have done. When I reminded him that he'd previously complimented my body, he said, that was laying down. Now I see you standing up and how tight your shirt is around your gut and it's so disgusting to me. The fact that you were able to even type this is astounding. I would have been incarcerated from decapitating this person and getting rid of the teeth so that his family couldn't identify him. I started crying and he said, stop being pathetic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a gun now. I'm getting heated. I started crying and he said, stop being pathetic and crying over every little thing. You need to toughen up and get over stuff. He says I shouldn't be angry because he was telling the truth and being honest. For reference, I work out five times a week, eat the healthy meals he's taught me to make and avoid sweets. We are set to move and get married in two months and now I'm questioning everything. Am I upset over nothing? Advice is welcome. Here's some advice, okay? Watch Dexter because he got away with it for so many seasons and you could probably learn something from that because this person is fucking insane. No one should talk to you like that, let alone a fiance. What are we talking about? Anyone who talked to me like that, I would just murder. I am almost inclined to believe that this is not real because how could someone even talk to someone like that? Like that is fucking crazy. You know what you should do probably? Get, a, get an animal to eat them. Bring them to one of those tiger fucking places and like kick them in. Anyway, um, I hope you guys learned something. A lot of you weren't being too sensitive. You know, I, honestly, here's a rule. If you feel so compelled that you have to write something out on Reddit after you've talked to your friends, your family, your therapist, and you still have to go on Reddit and be like, hey guys, is it me? It isn't. It's everything else. It's someone else's fucking issue. They're being psychotic and you're just feeling, have feelings and emotions like a normal person. But anyway, that is all for this week and uh, I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, enjoy your week. Yeah.